Hi guys, welcome back to Welsh Royal Gaming. Uh, today's video, I'm going to show you some recent purchases, and uh, some of them are going to be upcoming videos of unboxings and uh, putting them together and a little bit of chat about them. Um, I'm going to show you the uh, Flak 88 and how I've based it and how I haven't based it. You, you'll understand in a minute. Um, yeah, so we we'll move on now. So uh, I'll go to the Flak 88 first and show you that. So anyone didn't see the unboxing video, this is the Flak, well, it's the Flak 37, or the 88, it was the 88mm anti-aircraft gun, which just was pointed uh, down and shot at tanks, basically. That's the easy way to describe it. Uh, it was a fiddly kit, I'll be honest with you, but uh, now it's together, it is quite impressive, I do like it. So that's the gun, I decided to do the crew separate. On their own base. Um, you could have done these in a uh, Luftwaffe blue uniform as a Luftwaffe field unit, but I decided to keep it so my army's all sort of the same and do like the usual field green slash grey. Uh, there is no right shade of green or grey for a German uniform. If anyone tells you you've got the wrong shade of grey or green, uh, I think there is a picture going around of a load of jackets laid out, the German uniforms throughout World War II and there's like you know endless different shades of green or grey so uh, yeah so <clears throat> don't listen to them if anyone do tell you so what I've done uh, this is a CD from Longleat <laughs> uh, I filled the middle in um, PVA uh, house ready mix filler and brown paint and it gives you like this very hard but like a textured sort of well, mud, I suppose, but it dries like absolutely rock solid. Then a bit of PVA, and then some green scatter then, with some little bits of stuff in there. I can't remember what's actually called the basin stuff. It is, uh, look at that, metal scree. Comes in a little box. To be fair, I've based a lot, this has lasted me. God alive, I've done loads of stuff. I've done, my Napoleonics have been based in it. My Celtic army being based with it, a lot of my Germans being based with it, and based this, um, so it's standing still a lot of pot left, so it does go very far. So uh, I have put a little magnet in the bottom of this, and you can see where the soup glue is poking up through, and we can add the sticks on like that, and that's the base. Uh, you could, you don't have to take the base. You could just. Plum down the table like that if you wanted to, which could be probably better, and then have the crew around it. But uh, I've made a base here just in case I did want to take a base because I do like a base. I was gonna put some boxes and they got some spare ammo and stuff on here, but when all the crew's on it, there's not a lot of room for anything. It's surprising the motor crew on it. So you've got seven men on it. Um, there's a guy there with a bit like a binoculars. So I wasn't using them as a spotter. I thought they had extra crew, but I haven't, so I can't. So I'm gonna have to get a spotter or a forward observer. So I'm gonna, when they're all on, there's not a lot of room for anything else. I didn't want to stick them all down because that would have been a nightmare to try and carry around in my carry case. So I have, that's why I've done them separate. And then you can remove casualties as you go through the game. <coughs> uh, but you can base, if you do go in, you'll base it however you want. I usually do base it on one base. Uh, I don't know if I'm never worth it, but I'm sorry I did now in a way because I can't really use it because the base I built I went a bit nuts on it. Uh, if you did see the last video, I think I'd put it in that. So, yeah, as you can see, it's not really made for gaming. <coughs> I probably will get another one. So, moving on now to uh, my recent purchases. Um, I'll probably unbox this here now because it's only a small kit if I can get it open. I haven't tried opening it. Um, don't snap it. So this is the Rubicon Goliath team. Uh, it's only a couple of quid. It's quite cheap. Uh, comes with a crew. I'm interested to see how this scales up with the boat action stuff. It doesn't look too bad. And then the Goliath, which is basically a remote control um, bomb, basically. I've seen one in real life. They are surprisingly big. I think um, Allied troops, when they captured them or found them, I think they used them re rig them and use them as toys and they're just driving them around and stuff so a bit of fun there <laughs> um 
Flap and a Four Whirlwind from Warlord. I, there's a reason why I wanted this tank. Um, one, it looks cool. Number two, it's a, it's, for some reason, it's a real pain in the bum on uh, War Thunder. If you play War Thunder, you know what I mean. This thing is just so annoying when it shoots you. Another thing, I, I read a book, I think it was Blood Red, Blood Red Snow or something like that. I think it was Blood Red Snow. And basically, uh, the German position was getting over in by Russians. If I can remember correctly, this thing just basically pointed the guns down and just opened fire on the Russians. And uh, it was quite a... It done quite a good job, let's say that. So I wanted to get one just to put in a list. The problem is it do take up a tank slot, because it is a Panzer IV, basically. <coughs> so you are getting that extra armour on this. But it is open topped, obviously, because you can see you can see the crew in it. So it can be pinned by um, hand weapons, rifles, machine guns. So yeah, so that is the downside of it. But the upside, I think it's like four auto cannons, which uh, could be pretty nasty. No additional pins, as you can quite imagine, this thing opening up on top of you. But uh, the thing is, if I take this, I can't take a tank, but then I have got a Flak 88 as an anti-tank, which is a super, super heavy anti-tank gun, but it hasn't got the mobility of a tank. So it could be fun in the list, but I don't really know until I do it. I probably will do it, to be honest with you, because I do like to take... Uh, fun lists it's fun maybe it's not so fun for my opponent maybe I don't know I can't really uh, I don't really know how to make like a cheesy German list I'd, I find they're always pretty balanced especially just a regular platoon yeah um, I this one I might do an unboxing video at the same time as maybe some of the other things but uh, we'll see so <coughs> yeah that's that so I'm looking forward to doing that one it looks pretty fun and I'm looking forward to using it so <coughs> Excuse me. I also bought the Rubicon models, the Jag Panther. I seen this at the Tank Museum, and it's an absolute beast. Um, the Jag Tiger is an absolute beast, but this thing, the Jag Tiger in the in bolt action, is a lot of points. Be again a, a bit of a mean tank, but I seen the Rubicon in the Jag Panther, and I thought I do like Rubicon models, so I thought yeah, I'm gonna get a, a Rubicon Jag Panther, and I did. So there you are. So, uh, looking forward to getting this up and running. Especially now I'm made of, uh, he bought the uh, British Tank Army start set, which comes with three Churchills and like three Shermans. I think it's three Shermans. And uh, the Churchills are super heavy tanks, which got 11 plus armour. So, even with a super heavy armor tank gun, you still need a four to do like minimum damage. And basically, you need a five to pen it, which uh, <coughs> is. Surprisingly difficult in bolt action, especially when you start adding up the uh, minuses to hit, long range. The long range takes a pen, um, takes a minus one pen as well to your gun. So yeah, so I'm glad I bought this now, so it could be useful. And it could be useful against uh, the Russian IS-2, which Martin has got. So I did need some backup. So now my Tiger 1 and my Panther has got a Jag Panther to back him up. So that's going to be a pretty hefty tank platoon. So yeah, so looking forward to getting this one up and running. I will do an unboxing video of making this on this. But today I just wanted to show you some of the things I bought. Because I've been, I've been a good boy and I haven't opened none of them. Which is uh, unlike me. <clears throat> this thing, this how it comes. It doesn't come in a box. I think it's made to order, I do believe. It is the Stern Tiger. It's a Warlord Stern Tiger. Now, in game, it's, it's like 500 odd points, maybe 600 points. It's got um, a heavy rocket mortar, which is basically a heavy howitzer. And it's got some other special rules. It's like 4d6 damage for buildings, and uh, you can re-roll the hits and stuff. It's just absolutely monster. It's a monster, basically. Um, in real life, not many of them was made. It was like 12 or maybe 18 of them. Something around that area. <clears throat> um, it, you've probably very rarely seen one now today. It probably is. I have seen a battle for this in the... Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. I seen the battle for this in uh, the tank museum, and uh, it's ridiculous. To be honest with you, how how they how they loaded that gun. I think it even comes with a crane on the back to load the shell. <laughs> I haven't opened it yet, but uh, I will do an unboxing. Well, an unboxing. I'll do an unwrapping. Maybe play pass or pass with the missus if she wants. But I will do an unwrapping video, and I will make this. Um, it's resin, so we will need soap and scrub. 
Um, I do find wall or resin pretty clean to be honest with you, but it's worth doing if you do spray it. Uh, the paint can start chipping off because the um, what is it? they leave um, the release agent on it, and that acts as a barrier between the actual resin and the paint, and then it can just the paint just comes off basically. So uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to getting that and running. That is going to be an absolute beast if we play a bigger game. Uh, the British and the Russians better look out for this thing coming. So yeah. Um, last but not least, <coughs> um, this one today I will be unboxing and uh, putting together, and I'll show you then the um, the finished article. I won't be painting it today because I haven't got time, but I will put it together and show you it. Um, it's the SDKF says seven, or I will try and say it in German. The Sonderkraft Fazoig. Uh, what's it called? Zidane is a seven, something like that. Uh, any German speakers, I'm sorry if I butchered that. Uh, I put it, it probably sounds horrendous in a Welsh accent, speaking German. Basically, it means uh, like a special purpose vehicle. Um, which was it was these vehicles were made to do a job. This one basically was made to drag around um, heavy guns. So the flak is perfect example of a heavy gun. Uh, in the game, this can drag any gun, any anti aircraft gun. So it's worth having, and I think it's the only thing apart from you can get horse. I think horses can drag it, can drag the uh, flak eighty eight. So I had to get one, so I did. But it comes with the seven slash one seven slash two, um, which you can convert this to. Basically, what you've done is there's an arm. You can get an armored canopy. Uh, the back is flat, and it's got a flat gun on it. Um, but I'm just gonna be making that one, just the toe around my gun and the crew. Um, these were made all the way through the war, so you can use an early war, mid war, late war, if you're doing that sort of specific um, age, time, whatever. Um, I think they made like 12,000 of them, something like that, maybe a bit more, which is it's quite a lot of trucks. Um, I think they weighed like about 8 ton. There is bigger ones, isn't there? There's, there's the 8, I think it's like, I think it's a 12, I think it's a 12 ton and it goes up again, it's a bigger one again. But uh, they may be a little bit big for bow action. But uh, yeah, look forward to uh, looking forward to getting my um, flak A on a table, seeing what I can do. I haven't put the stripes on the gun because it haven't killed anything yet. Um, I think I'm gonna save them. If it do knock out a tank or stuff again, I will start adding stripes to it. So uh, it, well, you, the driver, you you got two drivers. One's in a DAC uniform, and then one's in the normal German standard issue jacket and whatever. Um, it's got all the options here, look. Oh, we've got two headlight options. Windshield, fold-down option. Fo these kits are brilliant. The, the thing, you can make your, like, you can make some, some of these kits come with so many different options. It's ridiculous. So there's a bit of a painting guide. But what I'll do, I'll spray uniform grey. Um, a dark wash over the top of it. A high, um, like a dry brush and a uniform grey just to pick out all the raised pieces do the track and then I'll be here. I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna mess around too much it's just a truck at the end of the day but yeah looking forward to getting on the table uh, so we're going to the unboxing and let's, let's put these away and then I'll uh, I won't show you me making it because uh, it would be rated 18 because <coughs> some of these kids can't be fiddly uh, so we'll just crack on with the button unboxing so in the game, uh, these are unfortunately soft skin vehicles, which means they can be taken down by small arms fire, which is quite annoying. So there's the uh, all the different you know, markings. You got the uh, Deutschland Afro Corps markings. Uh, yeah, registration plates. That's cool. I got some. Um, I got some spare. Um, crosses and stuff, going to stick on it. Um, so this is the kit. So I have become a bit of a fan of Rubicon. I will be honest with you. Always very nice and clean. And got spare rifles there, I think, for the back. And what I am planning on doing is the back is maybe getting some stowage. So maybe I do. This comes with the uh, the Flak 88. I've been undercoating them. Uh, it's the canisters that carries the actual round, so I might put these in the back 
I don't know about putting them in because I don't really, don't really want 88 ammunition rolling around the back of a truck when you're driving through God knows what. So I might put the canisters in I'm, and I might find a place for them on the actual base of the 88. But uh, let's see, let's see what happens. So yeah, so there's, there's nice and clean. Some nice instructions. The canopy. So this can carry 12, 12, 12 men in it. So if you are using it in a game with the 88, um, that that would be dragging the 88 and the actual crew. Uh, I think when you're towing a gun or you're towing and with crew, I think it takes up the whole 12 men slot of the uh, vehicle until you disembark it or untow it or unlimit it or whatever you want to call it. So these instructions, there's the, uh, um, the a different version of it. So the flat gun basically, the, the back's like sort of float, folds down and this thing goes on the back. I suppose you could, I might keep the flat gun because I, I don't know, you could probably stick down the base and probably just use it as a flat gun put a couple of crew on it, do you mean I can't see one not? Uh, nice instructions uh, don't look too bad some little fiddly bits windscreen wipers and stuff uh, so yeah, so I'm going to pause this video now uh, put it together and then uh, so I'll speak to you in a minute. Thank you very much. So guys, welcome back. Um, there he is. So I've uh, glued it all together. This kit I found out to use super glue. The plastic glue weren't quite doing it. I find that with Rugon kits. I think some kits, I have used plastic for Rugon kits before. Plastic glue. But uh, the last couple I've had to use super glue. I'm not quite sure why. If anyone do know, please post in the comments. But uh, maybe I'll Google it later. Uh, so it wasn't too bad. Some little fiddly bits with the, um, see there, the rifle racks with the little bars that hold them in. The wheels weren't too bad. It came sort of mostly together. Some little fuel cans in the back. Um, I haven't done the final stage, which is the canopy. Because I'm not quite sure if I want it open or closed. But um, I think what I'll do is I'll undercoat it. Uh, I'll paint the interior bits. And then I'll decide then whether I want a closed canopy or an open canopy. Um, so uh, I'll see which one looks best or which one I'll refer. I'm thinking I think a closed canopy might be pretty pretty cool with a canopy over the top. But uh, we'll see. So yeah, so that's that's the, my toe for my Flak 88. Which I'll uh, slide into view. So there she is. Um, Rubicon, do do a, a Flak 88 or a Flak 3 sound kit. Um, but, um, I am tempted to get it because it comes with a tow and a trailer which uh, I think it looked pretty cool without actually towing the trailer because it has got a tow hitch on the back but yeah so I'll have to uh, maybe pick one out in the future when I go through the, uh, my little hole that I've got now gathering up underneath my desk um, in the game like I said before, it is a soft skin vehicle, so it's not going to do. Um, basically, his main job is to drag the gun on into a position. It might, it might get a chance to uh, transport a unit or two around before it gets shot up or destroyed. It doesn't come with a machine gun or anything that you can put on it. Uh, the kit you can convert, you can do the extra, the one or the two, which is the flat back, but it doesn't come with the flat gun. I thought it would have come with a flat gun, but it doesn't. So. Uh, yeah, so well, I, I didn't want that version anyway. I just wanted the actual, the true carrier slash tow. Nice little kit though. I'm looking forward to uh, getting it on the table and seeing what I can do. So, uh, yeah, so thanks for watching for that. And uh, you might hopefully see in that um, battle report or two. We are aiming to do a battle report, but uh, it's trying to get people at the same time together. So uh, I work shifts, my mate Adam works shifts, Reese is in uni. And he's uh, he's well, he's gone back down west for the week or two, I think. So yeah. So, but um, my next video now, um, I leave it up to you guys. Uh, 
and what you want to see basically. So we've got the Flak Panzer IV, Whirlwind, the Jag Panther kit, or last but not least, the Stern Tiger. So if you do want to see one of these, uh, leave, a, leave a comment, just put Flak Panzer or Jag Panther or Stern Tiger. Um, I do read all the comments, guys, and usually do comment. I do appreciate it. And also, I appreciate you watching my videos, listening to me wiggle on about, uh, about what I'm doing. But basically, the most votes wins, then I'll do that next video, and then the second video, obviously, we'll do the next, like the running up sort of thing. So, if you do want to see the Sturm Tiger next, just comment Sturm Tiger. If you want to see a Jag Panther, comment Jag Panther, and so on. And then that's the next video. I am looking forward to putting it together though. This will have to be soaked and scrubbed because it is resin. That's plastic, obviously. That's like a resin. I think it's a resin hull. I think it's a resin hull. Yeah, resin hull. So it's be the same. I'll soak it and scrub it. So yeah, so it's up to you guys which one um, unboxing you want to see next. And um, we'll have a bit of a chat about the tank. So yeah. Um, I don't really like the video myself putting the stuff together just because when I am modeling or painting, I uh, like to watch slash listen to YouTube videos. Um, I also listen to audio books when I'm doing it. Um, I'm, I listen to Game of Thrones. I've read the books, I've watched the CDs. Um, I do find the books uh, better, but it's a shame that you actually haven't finished it and the CDs have taken over the books. But I'm listening to the audio books now, and the guy reading them does about 100 different, la different accents, which is crazy. So, fair way to him. But yeah, so comment in what you actually like to do. And uh, I always do read the comments. And uh, thanks for listening. And um, I'll speak to you soon. Happy hobbying.